Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend, to this, the final day of broadcasting for this week here at Bible Tracks uh, Incorporated and Bible Track Echoes. I hope you're having a great week in your walk with the Lord. My Bible right now is sitting open to the Gospel of Mark and chapter 12. Mark 12, I'm going to begin reading at verse 35 here in just a moment. If you can, reach over, get your Bible, and join me there, please. Well, in much of our recent days in Mark's Gospel, Jesus has been the examined one. He'd been examined by the religious leaders of the Jews. And frankly, for a long time, it bothered me that the Jewish leaders of Jesus' day were trying to find fault with Christ. But then I realized something. They were simply doing their job. You see, during the Passover week, the Passover lamb had to be killed on the 14th day of that month. The Jewish family selected their lambs on the 10th day of the month. And so for the next three days, their lambs were going to be inspected for blemishes. So Jesus, the Lamb of God, spends much of his days during Passover week being examined. A friend, you already know that they found no fault in him. Well, in today's verses, the tables are going to be turned. Today, the lamb becomes the lawyer. Today, the examined one becomes the examiner. But just wait till you see how Jesus does this. Friend, this is good stuff. You get your Bible and join me in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 12. Along the way, I'm going to be giving you a telephone number that you can use your text messaging phone and you can uh, communicate with me. This will broadcast well by so doing, become a two-way communication. Uh, if you're into text messaging, I hope you'll be ready for that number. Uh, right now, though, in my hand is one of our gospel tracks. It's one I use a lot, a, a lot. I mean that, a lot. This one's entitled The Gift. The gift. Now, the reason I use it so much is because, number one, it's very simple and very clear. Let me, let me just stop here. Every now and again, I get people that say to me, Brother Mark, what is a track? Well, we're not talking about a music track. We're talking about a track, T-R-A-C-T, that explains to somebody how to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, to have their sins forgiven, to receive the gift of eternal life. And that's really what this track, The Gift, is all about. This is a very simple presentation of the clear uh, way that God has designed to take away the sin that you have, that I have, that everybody has. And the only way that the sin can be taken away is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This simple but clear presentation of the gospel can be read by somebody with very little, if any, background in the Bible. They never went to Sunday school and so on. But this track clearly lays out that salvation from our sin is offered to us as a gift of God through his son. Jesus paid the price for our sin debt. We receive the, the forgiveness through Christ as a gift, free gift to us. Here's a great track. Let me send you this track, would you please? Now, at the very end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to come on. He's going to ask you to give to us your name and address and ask for a sample packet of all of our English tracks. We will send you that sample packet absolutely free of charge. He will give you a phone number, a mailing address, an email address, a website, and so on. You choose one of those means and ask for the sample packet, and we would be delighted. We'd be thrilled to be partners with you in extending the gospel to more people. This track, The Gift, will be in that sample packet. So you'll be ready for that. I will give you a text messaging number. He will give you the means of communicating with our office. You'll be ready along the way. 
Well, now come with me, please. The Gospel of Mark, beginning at verse uh, chapter 12, beginning at verse 35, says this. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. The episode I just read here can also be found over in Matthew chapter 22 and Luke chapter 20, but right now let me give you my outline for these three verses. In verse 35, we have the question. That's the point, the question. Jesus asks the Pharisees a question. In verse 36, we have the quote. Jesus is going to quote here from Psalm 110. Then verse 37 is the quandary, uh, the, 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 the confusion, the decision-making confusion that Jesus' question puts the Pharisee leaders into. Well, if we were to go to Matthew's account of this, we would find that while Jesus says these words before all that are assembled at the temple, his question here is pointedly directed at the Pharisees. Remember what has been happening all along here in recent times or leading up to these, this section of verses. These, these Pharisee men had seen Jesus deal quickly and frankly rather easily with a question put to him by the Sadducees about the resurrection. But the Pharisees, uh, they prided themselves on being better Bible students, better Bible scholars than those Sadducees. So what does Jesus do? He asks the, a question of these Pharisees that, that they felt, frankly, was really an easy question. In essence, Jesus asks this, who is Messiah? This question leads Jesus to confront these leaders who say they long for Messiah to come with the whole idea of, is the Messiah your Lord? You see, the Messiah was David's Lord. He said so. But he's going to, in essence, be pointing a finger at the Pharisees and say, is Messiah really your Lord? Now, let me just lay out some undisputed facts that come out through this whole discussion. Fact number one is this. Messiah was going to be King David's son. Therefore, he was going to be a human being. Fact number two, King David called Messiah Lord, thus rendering himself the servant of Messiah. David was a lesser person than the Messiah. And then third fact is because of fact one and two, we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Psalm 110 speaks both to the life of David, a real episode in his life, but speaks of Messiah as well. It's why we call it a Davidic a, a psalm, a psalm about David, and a messianic psalm, a psalm that deals with Messiah. Friend, you do realize, don't you, that the Messiah to be both the son of David and the Lord of David, that Messiah would have to be both divine and human. He must be God in flesh. And that's exactly who Jesus Christ is. Now, we also need to see that Jesus, that Jesus credits David's psalm as being inspired. We find that there in verse 37. Verse 36, excuse me, David wrote, it says, as the Holy Spirit moved him. David was speaking prophetically of the Messiah who had not yet come when he wrote those words there when he penned them there in Psalm 110. Oh, the Jewish leaders standing before Jesus, they fully believed God was the author of the Old Testament. They, they fully believed that King David spoke about the Messiah, but what they did not done, what they had not caught, what they had not grasped was the higher view of who Messiah was. These leaders understood that Jesus, Jesus had been, during his earthly ministry, had been claiming to be the Messiah, God's Son, over and over. They had rejected him, rejected this whole notion that Jesus was Messiah, that Jesus was God's Son. Jesus now shows them from Scripture that Messiah would be both man and God. And once more, these rulers of Israel had the opportunity to believe in the Lord in Jesus Christ as their Messiah and as their Lord and to bow before him and receive him. 
but their long-standing religious thinking just would not let them do this. He had done miracles. It was obvious Jesus Christ was from God, but they could not get past their long-standing religious background, the things they've been taught all their life. Oh, dear friends, salvation from sin is not in a church. It's not in a religious uh, uh, code promoted by some religious group. Salvation is in a person. It, salvation is a person. It is Jesus the Christ. Salvation from sin hinges on your life, in your life, on one simple point. Who is Jesus Christ, and have you received him as your Savior from your personal sin? Now, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to come back to this in a moment. But right now, I'm interested in what you think about the things I've been saying from Mark chapter 12, verses 35 to 37. If you are involved in text messaging, text me the word gospel to this number. I'm going to give it twice now, and about a minute from now, I'm going to give that number again. So if you're driving and so on, you'll have a chance to pull off and jot the number down. But here is a text messaging number. It's 708 515 4086. Again, it's area code 708 515 4086. Text me the word gospel. I'll ask you a question like, What's your name? I'll ask you to rate the program, be, uh, I think one to four, one to five. You can even ask me some questions using your text phone. Friend, let's make this a two way conversation. Well, let me come back and pick up one final note here. Jesus is talking to very religious people who reject Jesus as the means of salvation. They are still hanging on to, uh, they're still looking to their, the, the code that the, of Judaism to take away their sin. The code of Judaism was about the, the need for shed blood, the need for a sacrifice that was preparing them for the sacrifice, the Lamb of God. They were so caught up in their religious code that they could not see Christ, the, the, the Son of God, who he was despite all the miracles, the clarity with which he owned himself to be who he was before them. Friend, it is possible. I, I met person after person and sharing the gospel with them who were so uh, in, in, tied up by their religious background that they grew up in church. Their grandma believed in this, and their mama believed in this, and their grandpa believed in this, and their grandfather, great grandfather, uncle was a preacher and whatever, and they're into a moral code. But salvation is a person. Dear friend, that's why the Bible says you must receive Jesus, not your moral code, not your church's code. You must receive the person of Jesus Christ. He is the God man. He is Messiah. He is the son. Of, he is the eternal God who came to earth in flesh and dwelt among us, died on the cross, shed his blood because you and I had had broken God's code. We had broken God's standard. We have sinned. And God came himself, took on flesh to die for us to pay our sin debt that we through him could be saved from all of our sin by the simple act of faith. That is a loving, gracious God. Oh, friend, if you've never received him, do so right now. Let me give you that text number again. It is area code 708-515-4086. You stay tuned for my announcement. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.